Hey there. So in this video, we're going to talk about the reactions of enols and enolates with alkyl halides. So we've previously seen the reaction of enols and enolates with halogens. So with the alkyl halides, uh, these electrophiles are weak enough that with a weak nucleophile, there is no reaction. And so really for this reaction, we need to generate enolates, which are the stronger uh, nucleophiles. And when we do that, we get, as usual, substitution um, or installation of the R group at the alpha carbon. Same general mechanism each time. So let's look at an example. So in the first step is LDA or lithium diisopropyl amide. We ignore the second step for now because we haven't added that, that um, electrophile yet. So the first step is generating the enolate and the important thing about LDA or lithium diisopropyl amide is that it's a, a strong non-nucleophilic base and so instead of reacting at the carbonyl carbon which could be problematic uh, we generate only the enolate here and now we've generated the enolate which is a strong nucleophile and that's the end of step one so in step two we add in the electrophile which is an alkyl halide So this step is effectively an SN2 reaction following all the same pathways as a regular SN2 reaction. We have a primary alkyl halide. So with that alpha carbon, there's a good leaving group. It's not very sterically hindered. We have a strong nucleophile and here the nucleophilic atom is the alpha carbon. And so we end up forming a new bond between those pi electrons at the alpha carbon and that, uh, the, the alpha carbon from the alkyl halide. So these reactions can also be done under more complex reaction settings. So I'll first invite you to identify the most acidic proton of the three indicated. So hopefully you said the most acidic is proton C followed by proton A followed by proton B. And if you look at the overall reaction here, what we're looking for is a substitution of this alkyl halide at the alpha carbon of the carbonyl but we need to do it at the least acidic proton. And so if we add one equivalent of lithium diisopropyl amide, it's going to deprotonate at site at the proton C to start. So that first equivalent of LDA will deprotonate at proton C, the carboxylic acid. A second equivalent of LDA will deprotonate the nitrogen atom, the amide. And then finally, a third equivalent of LDA will be able to deprotonate that final position at the carbon atom. So overall, it took three equivalents of lithium diisopropyl amide to generate a nucleophilic alpha carbon. So the second thing that's important here is to think about the principle of microscopic reversibility. So as we add in an electrophile, that electrophile is going to add at the most nucleophilic, react at the most nucleophilic position. So that's also, we can also consider that as the least stable position or the one that was deprotonated last in this sequence. So when we add in the electrophile, it's going to react at the most nucleophilic site, the carbon, rather than at the oxygen uh, atom or at the nitrogen atom. So we'll get an SN2-like reaction displacing the bromide. So we have the new carbon-carbon bond formed. And now in a third and final step of the reaction, we could add in acid to neutralize that final product. And you may want to predict which sites get protonated first. So we're again going in the reverse order and protonating the most basic sites to start. So that would be at the nitrogen atom. So now that left-hand side of the molecule is, um, is neutral. And now finally, with some more acid, we can protonate at the least basic site or the site that was the most stable after it was deprotonated. So in this video, we saw two examples of um, enolate alkylation. In the first one, lithium diisopropyl amide quantitatively generated the enolate. That enolate is a strong nucleophile that reacted with the alkyl halide in an SN2 step to generate a new carbon-carbon bond. The second step was similar, except there were multiple acidic sites, and we wanted to be able to form the bond between the carbon-carbon, which was actually the less acidic site of them all. And so we needed three equivalents of lithium diisopropyl amide to successively deprotonate the most acidic, intermediate acidic, and finally the least acidic sites. 
and then the principle of microscopic reversibility held and so the most basic or the most nucleophilic site was the one that was deprotonated last and so when the electrophile was added in the carbon reacted first generating the new carbon carbon bonds so that's the enolate alkylation step or the sn2 step Following that, adding in acid, still continuing to follow that principle of microscopic reversibility. So the next most basic site was then protonated, followed by the most stable or least basic site to generate that final product.